for the father judges no man. See, whenever you see the word for, that means like because. So it's saying because of this statement right here. Now we're going to tell you why. For the father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. You see? That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which hath sent him. So that, you know, that puts, uh, that, you know, shoots down Judaism that denies Jesus Christ, right? Definitely. So, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, so this is talking about passed from death unto life, right? And we know in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 15, that the dead in Christ rise first on rapture day. Okay, so it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, Jesus is speaking through here, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Let's see, if you're dead, you're going to, those who hear the Son of God shall live again. That's definitely 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 and 16, as it says right here. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Why? Because it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, which means you're dead in Jesus, the body of Christ dead in the, the, the grave, will God bring with him? Then it says, um, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, and with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So moving back to John 5, isn't that what we just read? It says, Finding out where I was. Yeah, that that they passed from death unto life. Then it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now, not only that, but they heard his voice. You see? See, it says right there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I jumped up. Okay, let's, let's read 524. It says, um, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and he belie and believeth on him that sent me, see, you have to believe in Jesus and God the Father, and hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So, verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So, we know in Revelation 4, 1, that we hear the words come up hither just like the two witnesses Moses and Elijah in Revelation 11 12 come up hither and we hear that it's being spoken by a trumpet it sounds like a trumpet but in Revelation 1 19 it says or 1 10 Paul says that I heard a voice behind me speaking like a trumpet which was the Alpha and Omega, Jesus Christ. So, those who come up hither in Revelation 4.1 are hearing Jesus Christ calling them. As it says right here, the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live again after they're dead. So that proves that Paul the Apostle said that the rapture was a mystery but it was not hidden entirely. You see, if you study the Bible intently, the mysteries of, from the Old Testament start to wake up. They, you start to see what they mean, but this is just obvious here. So we move on forward, it says, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Jesus Christ raised from the dead. 
And after Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, he was given all authority to judge us and to call us up from death to everlasting life. You see how it works? And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. So that's definitely telling you the Son of Man is the Son of God. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. This is the second time. Or maybe it's the third time already now. We just heard it up here. Voice of the Son of God, and he that hear shall live. He that heareth my word and believeth on him pass from death on to life. So it's actually the third time, but second time for hear his voice. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh, I guess those Ruckmanite uh, easy believers, millennials that believe that we don't need to repent and turn from sin, have just been thrown into the resurrection of damnation, into the hell and lake fire. Wow. Amazing, huh? Easy believers. Just believe on Jesus and you're saved. And you know, one of their favorite sayings is, is that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ paid for all your sins, then you don't trust in Jesus and therefore you're not saved. If you think you have to repent of your sin, you're, you're practicing work salvation. But little do they know that returning from sin is not work. It's not a work. It never was. Never was. Not only that, but works salvation, it's true. We are not saved by works. But in Isaiah 64, 6, it says, all our works are as dirty rags to God, right? So why does Paul say we are created in Christ's workmanship in Ephesians 2.10? Because after you believe and after you are sealed, then he says that we should walk in his ways. You see, that's Christ's workmanship. That's not your works. That's Christ's work works working through you big difference. Okay. So, this verse right here, John 5, 29, by Jesus himself, just damned easy believers to hell. You must have a changed life. When you turn from sin, it doesn't mean you can turn from all sin and never sin again. We are created in iniquity. Psalms 51, 5. It's impossible. Okay? You have to look at turning from sin like this. Okay, you have a thousand different sins in front of you. Okay, you can do. You can have fornication, sex, masturbate, murder, all kinds of things. Porn, drugs, you have all kinds of things right in front of you, right? Okay, what happens when you turn your, your head from that? Okay, have you eliminated them from your life? No. You're simply turning away from them. But guess what? You tend to fall back sometimes. And at first, you fall back a lot. But as you slowly have Christ's workmanship working through you, and you read the Bible and study the Bible day after day, and you pray earnestly, asking God for forgiveness, John, 1 John 1, 9 says that He is faithful and just to forgive us of all sin. Then we know and trust that Jesus did pay for all of our past, present, and future sins. But, doesn't mean we don't ask for forgiveness for them. But, it doesn't mean that we don't turn from sin. That's the work, that's the um, salvation plan. Okay? The gospel is what saves you. The gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, that Jesus went to the cross and on the third day, in short, was resurrected, okay? And that you believe on this, you shall be saved. But that's only the beginning of your changed life, your sanctification of turning from sin and 
a person that as strive unto the mastery, as Peter says. So, that will be it for this teaching. Don't ever listen to anyone who tells you that Paul the Apostle was the first one that, to ever talk about the rapture. <laughs> Not true at all. Okay? It's in Ezekiel, it's there. In, in, you know, and it, it, it's in Ezekiel 33. I have a teaching on that. Uh, it's in many places in the Old Testament. Okay? But here we see it plain in our face by Jesus Christ right here. Thank you for listening and God bless.